Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Ronich, the statewide news, news service, jbiztechfilly.com, and as you can see here, columnist for the Jewish press. And I'm having a <laughs> lot of fun doing all three assignments. It's uh, really uh, rewarding. And also the uh, column that I have in the Jewish press is called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the yeah. case may be. But someone who's real good at relating to the Jewish community is our guest today. He's Leif Engstrom, uh, not the surfer, but the uh, <laughs> auditor for the city yeah. of Albany. Well, and, maybe you have to surf uh, through the books I, over <laughs> here. Yeah, nice. and I want to tell you, I want to ask you about that. Because sure. I Googled your name, and it came up with this surfer who's from Long Island named Leif Engstrom. It says, a long way from Long Island was one of the articles uh, that came up. So do you ha does this happen when you get confused? By this well, no, not, not, not up in Albany. The, the funny thing is, is, is just totally coincidentally, we took a vacation down to Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and to a village called Rincon. Uh, it's on the coast, it's a surfing village, but out of the blue, it turns out that that's where the surfing Leif Engstrom goes in the winter to surf. So, and he's very famous, he's very good, and, uh, and had no problem making dinner reservations, though they were a little <laughs> disappointed <laughs> when they saw me walk in the door. And you showed them your Amex card, right? And you said Lee Fengstrom yep, on it. Yep, like absolutely. The <laughs> but I uh, also, I mean, you and water go hand in hand yes. also. As yep. we take this, the Olympics are uh, going on now, and you have a connection with that. Yeah, I, I, I made finals at the 1996 Olympic uh, swimming trials. And uh, so I, I watch it very, very intensely. As a matter of fact, my club coach, when I was in high school and in college, was Ryan is Ryan Lochte's father. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I have a I have a lot of interest in watching that. I went to the University of Tennessee and I, I swam there. Um, was an All American there, and I actually won a couple of uh, national championships at, in USA and in USA still, swimming. And you're still fit. I mean, you still swim. Do you still exercise? I swim occasionally. It's you know <laughs> it, it, when when swimming is your job and, and training hard yeah. is your job. You 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 don't have the same enthusiasm for it once once. once and a lot of times, if they say that, a lot of sports but, players, you know, they're so obviously so. So fit 100%, and then they get like you see fat after yeah. five. But what's interesting years. is how quickly you rebound. Mm -hmm. Is is that once you've gotten your body to that level? I mean, I can get back in shape pretty quickly as compared to a lot of people because my body kind of it's recognizes that. Yeah. You know, interesting. You know that uh, audience sees that you're an auditor. We got into your pre-life over yeah. here beforehand, but it's very interesting to say my story. My father's an accountant. He passed away, and my sister, who had more of a business mind, and says, well, I want to be an account also. My sister, okay. Don't call it be an account, because she was a very active, she's a real people person. So she went into the hotel business, you know, because mm -hmm. people in and out, you know, constantly new people. It's interesting here, you know, a, a sports person, you know, like as an active person to be, I don't want to say a dry job like an auditor, but it seems like, you well, know, a sports person's more the... Uh, Yep, I mean, Active, auditor's a little know. different than, than accountant because we don't keep the books. Mm -hmm. um, we check up on things. Um, we, we, we look into things. And it's not just the financial side. We also do performance audit. Mm -hmm. So we go in and we see how departments are doing, not just financially, but are they performing for the people of Albany. Good segue so into the next question. Sure. One of your audits that was, I guess, Maybe controversial might have been about the landfill. Yeah, could yep. you explain what you found out with the landfill? There were some. We we were there. We were looking. The real impetus was with that was what happened in Colony, where they had a company coming in and kind of under the table um, at at the Colony landfill mm -hmm. making. Uh, Bypassing the scales mm -hmm. with a little uh, little money on the side is 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 what mm -hmm. things kind of wound out to be. That may not be the exact you know exactly what happened, but it was pretty close. They were bypassing; they weren't paying full fare for the tonnage that they were bringing in, and 
So we, we needed to make sure that that wasn't happening in Albany. We also needed to make sure that they had the controls in place to make sure that it didn't uh -huh. happen. So even if it's not happening now, we want to make sure that, that the, the steps are in place to, to cover us uh, in the future. drum roll, the results and were? And the results were no. We are, yeah. we, there was nothing like that going on. When we first went out there, um, we thought that the, that the tapes uh, were, went back nine months. Yeah. They didn't. They only went back 90 days. Uh -huh. So, and we had announced the audit before, less, right. more than 90 days before we went to get the tapes, so we didn't have any unannounced tape to look at. Uh -huh. So we went back a year later unannounced. Right. And we went in and, uh, and pulled the tapes unannounced and, and did a comparison between the tapes and the receipts yeah. and we didn't find anything. So any we problem. weren't able to, we you weren't able to do that. Problem, no, right? but we found quite a few they improvements were, that huh? they could make in okay. their controls to make sure that it didn't happen. Improvements in camera location. Uh, there certainly was the potential for, for things to happen because they had the same person doing too many of the financial activities. Okay. So when you have one person doing things, you can, uh, they, they, it makes fraud a lot easier than if they have to coordinate with somebody else, mm -hmm. then they've got to get somebody else to put their, their livelihood on the line to make a few extra bucks. Now, I was also uh, hearing recently about this Queemans land that the city yeah. of Albany owns that was supposed to be for the landfill when this landfill closes on Rapp Road, mm -hmm. and then the DEC said no mm -hmm. and scuttled that, mm -hmm. and we apparently have this acreage in Queemans that we don't know what to do with in the city. Yep. But uh, can you, I mean, did I get that story? That's right? about okay. what it's, where it stands. Okay. Um, we had initially had an agreement. I assume it was verbal. I haven't looked into it uh, with the state. And as a result, it got put into the budget to sell it to the state for nature preserve for $5 million. Uh, since then, mm -hmm. that number has declined significantly, and I, I, we don't know where it's going to land, uh, or if we're even going to see the value in, in, in what we end up being offered and, and make it worthwhile even making that, that sale. Does any of that um, go through your office at all? Or the, is no, just the sales do here? not. This is just no. of interest. Yeah, the okay. sales, sales are, I don't audit revenue on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I audit payables. I audit the money. They can't, the city can't write a check without my office mm -hmm. authorizing it. So that's, uh, that's the side that we're really kind of in management on, mm -hmm. is on the, on the purchasing and the payroll side. We really, really dig in on a regular basis and look at that stuff. Mm -hmm. On the revenue side, we have to do a formal performance audit and go out and, and take a look at but what's going on. But you give suggestions or something like that? I mean, would you, I mean, part of the audit, so you give yes. suggestions, hey, maybe we can have, because there's a lot of issues. Mark and I have really practically, I would almost say practically every politician in, in the capital district almost. The truth is, and one of the issues we recently had is like selling the Palace Theater mm -hmm. for one dollar. Yeah. So I mean, could you put your two cents? <laughs> or I, I, make a dollar what I, I try to do is I try to avoid um, putting in my two cents unless I've done an audit or unless it's in a payable, you know, unless, unless it's within my management purview, which is on the payable and payroll side. If it's on Something else with the city, I try to stick to, uh, you know, my opinions have to be audit opinions because if I get into gray areas and then I go in and I audit it and I've already made a statement about something, okay, tainted. then my opinion on that is tainted in, in, in the public. So do you so. feel that part of your, part of you as a citizen in the city of Albany is quashed? Because yeah. you can't say that's, everything that you want to say. I, I can't say everything that I want to say. But that's you know I'm not the only one. No, Judges not. can't say what they want to say. Um, you know, and other other people. You you if you're going to do your job and you're going to be trusted by the public to do your job, you have to you have to follow uh, that job. They want an independent auditor. And when I go out and I say I want take one side or another on an issue, and then I go audit it. They can't trust my audit, right. and they want an auditor that they can trust, and that really, 
you know, there are enough people well, with opinions out there yeah. that that yeah. mine, you know, you know what opinions are, you know, and uh, yeah, but you're the <laughs> auditor, your opinions a little more than the, the man in the street, and that and the way you keep it that way right. is you don't make opinions on things that you haven't public. thoroughly you, vetted. Yeah, yeah, you don't make it public. Uh, yeah, I know when I worked in the assembly in the Senate as a staffer, I couldn't say everything that I felt I wanted to say, even when I was off the clock. Yeah. And the reason for that was because the first line in the story was going to be, staffer for, for assemblyman, assemblyman so-and-so says this. Yep. And you sort of feel like they're taking yep. my if you freedom want to do of that, speech. If you want to do that, that go to work in civil service or go to work in private right. sector. Right. And, and then, then yeah. you're free to mouth off about anything, anything you want to. <laughs> and as you do, you're, you know, you will inevitably be wrong about some things and, and, and the quality of, of your opinion goes down, you know. So it's, it's best in practice to, to make your opinions known about things that you actually have knowledge about. Right. And, and that's a good rule in life, I think, yes. you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can give you a little context on that theater is, is that there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that theater and it's not going to be cheap. Three million dollars. That's that's I what heard. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. Also. I haven't analyzed it, I haven't but I know that there's work that needs to be done to right. the theater, right. and the city is in. And this I can tell you, the city is in very yeah. significant financial distress. And three million dollars, even borrowing three million dollars for the city to put it in. Is gonna, you know, that's that's a. Yeah, it goes the other lift. way, but maybe there's a private. Again, obviously, yeah, like exactly. you're saying, I say right away, I'm a rabbi, I'm not a businessman, yeah. a real estate appraiser, but it just, I mean, it seems like a nice building. Maybe someone out there would want to pay something for. A, then perhaps we theater. need to put out an RFP mm -hmm. or something along those lines. The, the city but of Albany has. I'm not optimistic that we're going to get a lot of. It. Well, <laughs> a except lot except out for it. the fact that the city of Albany has a lot of wonderful relationships with whether it's BBL or mm -hmm. it's, uh, so the uh, the guys who are redoing State Street, yeah. uh, Columbia Development. Well, they're kind of one of the same. They're hand yeah. in hand, part, and yeah. uh, and they also, you know, I just felt. Like, you know, for three, them, I mean, I work for BBL, so I know like $3 million yeah. for them is like water off a duck's back. Oh, I'm sure they enjoy hearing you say that, but yeah. uh, <laughs> they wouldn't be surprised that I said it either. <laughs> but, so I'm just saying you know, that, if, you know, if, if uh, there were sponsorships and things like that yeah. were, that were, were, were possible, that's something to explore. But if the, you know, if we're looking at a major upgrade and whether that's wise or not is something that can be debated. Um, you, you know, know I said to Holly Brown uh, the other a couple of weeks ago. I said, "Why don't you just uh, like do naming rights for the palace, like they did for the TU mm -hmm. Center and other facilities around the Capital District?" Yeah, and I mean like, that's hey, something that food that's thought. food for thought. I think what you saw was more of a proposal than a uh, right. a fait accompli. Yeah. Um, it has two boards to go through before right. it, uh, it has to get past the Common Council, right. and then it has to get bad, past the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, right. uh, which I chair. And um, so it's got those two steps to, uh, to mm -hmm. get through, and I certainly want to see the process. I want right. to uh, see the analysis. I want to see you know, what is actually being proposed so you're just, before I... you're just watching before you make it... Position. Make a, take a position, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I do know that there's a significant liability in, in maintenance out there that we that the city you know we're the landlord that we have to uh, we have to do something. Well, that's what about. insurance is for. So well, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, just, I have no filter today. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to ask you one other thing. Sure. Um, you mentioned about the uh, the deficit and the struggle, mm -hmm. the financial struggles for the city. We have a structural deficit, I believe it's called. Uh, I've heard all sorts of numbers. Mm. Let me get your take on what the structural deficit is. I can't give you an exact. Okay, I heard number. 18 million. That's in the neighborhood. Okay, it could be. I, here's the thing: is is the way that we budget salaries in the city. We budget every sa every position to be filled for the entire year. Mm -hmm. So. We don't fill every position for the full year. People leave. Some positions just 
don't ever get filled. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people leave and it takes three, four months to find the replacement. It happens, mm -hmm. and it happens all over. With police department, as people retire, you only hire police in classes. You don't hire them one at a time to replace. Right. So you can be down 15 police officers before you hire a new class. Same with firefighters. So you end up with these gaps in, in between what you budgeted for payroll and what you actually end up spending. So when we say a structural $18 million uh, deficit, maybe it's not that much. Maybe it's 14 million. Or 16. Under, yeah, or you know, it, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's in Because the salaries that are not that high to begin so, with. So, and yeah. it depends on your definition of what a structural deficit is. If you say, yes, if we filled every position, this is the structure of the budget, well, okay, this is then, then we've got it. that size of a deficit. Yeah. But, you know, we have a huge deficit. Okay. Regardless, okay. any I mean, you know, we're we're still knocking on a ten percent, seven to ten percent right. of the, our budget right. deficit, yeah, yeah, which yeah. in any organization is very Untenable. significant, yeah. and you know you can't close that with just administrative adjustments. I mean, you end up having to to make significant, real changes to personnel in the city yeah. and that include you know police fire dgs that's 70 80 percent of our uh, yeah. 70 80 percent of our mm -hmm. um, of our okay. budget but taxes is probably impossible i'm not i don't know you know nothing's but... impossible i mean if we're going to close it that has you know if we're stuck in a position where new york state says to us no you're not getting anything more sorry this is it you're going to figure this out on your own then Texas has to be part of it. Otherwise, mm. we get to such a point such a where, on where so not just not on the employees, because with police and fire, at least you can handle those with retirements because right. there's such a steady stream of them. But it, it's the um, it's the public safety <laughs> issues right. that you're talking about. You're talking about increases in response times and and those types of things. So you've got to try to find that balance. If we had a 10% tax hike on a $150,000 house, that'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of $150, $160 a, a year. year. Mm. So it is important to remember that the city's, city's share of your property taxes is only 30%. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not endorsing no, a tax hike, no. but we're talking reality. If New York State doesn't give us the, any additional money, Mm -hmm. As far as aid goes, and we're stuck with all these developments mm -hmm. that pay, you know, that 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 ring the city. You've got corporate woods. You've got just over our border, corporate woods. Mm -hmm. You've got the Target uh, Colony Center area. Just you know, that's within a stone's throw mm -hmm. of uh, of the city's boundaries. You've got cross gates, mm -hmm. literally within a stone's throw of cities right. of the city's boundaries. You've got the Vista Tech Park. You've got uh, any number of other other significant developments just over the border, mm -hmm. taking advantage of the urban core, but at the same time not contributing to to the services that are required yeah. to maintain the urban center. So if the state doesn't want to continue to give us that spin-up money, then the first thing we cut are the services to the state. <laughs> no, we can't do that. They're human beings too, and I'm you know, but but the reality is, if you are an assemblyman or a senator who yes. has a heart attack in, you know, after, after we make those cuts, you're going to experience the same uh, reduction mm -hmm. in, uh, in response time that my family will experience. Well, and, and it's kind of personal for me for two reasons. First, the fire department saved my son's life when he was choking. They showed up in three minutes. He was blue. He was 18 months old. Mm -hmm and he was blue. And he showed up, and I know the firefighter, she's a woman firefighter, mm -hmm. showed up, saved his life. Wow. And, you know, three minutes. Yeah, wow. That's three a, minutes. Yeah. If it was four or five, five who knows? Hey, who knows, yeah. So um, that's, that's real. One, right. That's real. And the other is, in that, and this is full disclosure, my wife is a firefighter. She just became a firefighter this year. Lovely. So nice. that's, uh, you know, and she was kind of inspired by 
what happened to, well, now you'll to have do instant. that. Now you yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Now you, now, now you never need. We, we don't have oxygen in our house, and oxygen was a big part of what oh, saved his oh. life. But, well, you you know, know. but we have had assemblymen and senators have heart attacks in the chamber. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this has been... And one of those and now they are there like that. Now they have the defibrillators. The nurses mm -hmm. come in. They're right on the third floor. You know, okay. it, they're real close. But yeah. still, you want to have EMS service. the EMS services. And I'm just wondering why the state can't uh, have their police you know, trained for EMS. I, I do think that it's that it is uh, well police trained for EMS. That you know they could do that. I'm sure they'd negotiate it in for a raise right. for the for the state police officers if right. if they're willing to do it. But um, but they're you know you're still going to have to have response and transport and all that. But um, yeah, it's you know. uh, it, it is a uh, the state. I think the view at the state is this: is we have so many local governments, yeah. and there isn't the political will, will yeah. to force consolidation the way that Ontario Canada did. Ontario right. Canada forced consolidation. And it's funny, that's in, in no smart, small part responsible for why they ended up with Bob Ford as the mayor of <laughs> Toronto. But um, they forced consolidation of, of their metro areas in, in Ontario, Canada. We don't have that. That people don't will. want it. They had they, a vote. People don't want it. They, I mean, every time, if when Waterford had the opportunity to reduce their property taxes by $300 per household, by, by, by consolidating the, mm -hmm. the town police into the, uh, into the Saratoga County Sheriff's Department, yeah. they voted it down, right. you know? And they were promised by contract the same police service. So People so, don't want it. So now New York State is, decide, is I, I think, is turning the screws on local government. Unfortunately, it does nothing to the wealthy suburban towns and puts the onus on the cities and there's, no suburban town that wants to combine services with with the city. So you know, maybe here and there, maybe we move you know one high level function, but not not really join making and, an and appreciable difference. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so let me ask you, of any of these audits, and you've done several since 2010. You've done quite a few. Have have you found any wrongdoing in any of these audits? Wrongdoing, as in criminal fraud. It, not really fraud. Um, there's some cases where we suspect, where I suspect fraud. Proving fraud and suspecting fraud are two different things. So what we do is we make sure that where we find a situation, that that situation, put, we put the controls in place to put an end mm -hmm. to that, uh, to that okay. situation. We have certainly found, for example, in the water department a couple of years ago, they were more than a million dollars, uh, had more than a million dollars in unpaid bills. Yeah. And they, they, they were just sitting on them for years. And, uh, and you know, the historical reputation of the city, you know, with, with you know, the history of the, of the machine, yeah. you didn't question the machine, you'll right. get paid when you, you'll get paid when we, we tell when you you're ready. gonna get paid, yeah, exactly. Right. And people didn't, weren't, the, the vendors weren't complaining and it really came to my attention when I had a, uh, had a small vendor come in, hat mm -hmm. in hand, he was going out of business and said, I, I need the money, I, I have to have the money. And, and it's been so long. Wow. And so we started looking into it and we called up all their vendors and they sent us in what we owed and it was over a million dollars, wow. was more than a year late. Wow. And which is completely unfair. To our to our local businesses. So the water had no water department had no resources to. Pay no, they had the money, and they that's did? the most infuriating part. Is the water department is a has separate yeah. bank account. Right. They're a separate entity, right. and not the department, but the water board is, and they pay for everything. They just weren't processing the invoices. And, and it was. Did your audit correct that? Yes, everything did get paid, and they're up to date now, and they're 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 doing a good job now. Okay. They have a new CFO. Yeah, they well. And uh, who's and, a, who is a CPA? Yeah. So that's uh, you know that's a uh, that's a they they're they're on top of things now, but uh, but a few years ago it was a really bad situation. So now I got to ask you about the space, the office space in the in City Hall. <laughs> What's going on with, I mean, you move, they moved out this codes and compliance mm -hmm. uh, department. Are you going to get 
the space that you need? We in need your some new space as, as an auditor's office because we share space with the treasurer's office. And as you can imagine, it results in more than a little bit of whispering about, uh, about things before we bring them forward. And I'd really like to be able to walk out of my office and just vent. Yeah. And I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> because I have people who I actually audit out there in, in, in the main area. So it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's something that needs to happen. It's something that I've been assured will happen. Unfortunately, we have a very expensive roof on, the cit uh, on City Hall yeah. that is leaking over the code enforcement office. Oh, yeah. well, that's ironic. Yeah, it, it's, it's an all-weather office. And um, <laughs> so we're not able to make that shift at the moment. Uh, the mayor has brought in an architect on a small contract to assess the space in City Hall, and I'm expecting to meet with him shortly. So, so, so how many people from the treasurers? I just thought one. I have there. one over there on the corner, but it is an open yeah, right, space right, and right, right. No, no, but there's, there's really one. no other place so, to put him. Right. So, so I, when the treasurer was on the program, I asked yeah. him about this and he said that he has extra desks in his office. And I said, then why don't you just put this guy over in these extra desks? He's the deputy treasurer. Yeah, he's yeah. got a he's got a lot of files. A lot of land. He's got a <laughs> lot of files that are surrounding him. Yeah. So it, it's not just a desk. No, no, it's no. A, it's a matter of, it's of a cub moving cubicle. him. Yes. Yeah. It's a large cubicle, and yeah. it's a matter of moving him, and it's quite a, bit of, quite a bit of stuff. And Darius really doesn't have space outside of my office area to house him. Because so he used to be the deputy, the deputy comptroller. Yeah. So that's why he's in that right. space. So. so so did you go over to the treasurer's office to look around to say, hey, this is how uh, you can I fit him in? I have measured every <laughs> possible scenario that I could think of to address this. I was hoping that uh, I was hoping that uh, law department could move up to the code enforcement space. Oh, okay. And then then I could either move over into the back corner or or um, Ken, who is mm -hmm. the deputy yeah. treasurer, could move over into some other space and just give me my current space. Right. I don't care. I just want space right. where I can where I can feel uh, comfortable, feel comfortable feel like openly discussing things. Exactly. And uh, and you know I'm you know it's it's annoying. It doesn't cripple my office. I can come bring people into my office. Yeah. We have a table there. We sit around. We can talk with the door closed and 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 figure things out. I just prefer to have it be a, a little bit more of a casual yeah. uh, situation. It's, and it's, uh, it's awkward to say, excuse me, Ken, but we have to have a meeting now. Could you please step out and go No, to yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. We just close our door. But, no, yeah. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's an issue that I'm hoping to get addressed. But, uh, is, there, is there anything that we didn't know enough to bring up to you and ask you about that you'd like to bring up? My, I mean, from the city's perspective, right now, right now we're extremely busy in what we're doing because we are transitioning to a computer system. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest issue for the city by far is our financial situation. Mm -hmm. And there's no solving it um, internally unless we're going to make some drastic drastic uh, changes to so what gets done you by You can't the city. do what Paula Mahan did in Colony with a one-year tax increase that's a separate one line. One year doesn't solve the problem. One year no. is one year. One year doesn't, is, you know, a, that, that one year is a bridge to, to an internal solution. We don't really have oh, okay. an internal solution unless... So you clearly can't, can't live within your means? Yeah, no. Oh, okay. No, unless okay. we, unless we have a significantly reduced police force, a significantly reduced fire department, significantly reduced uh, DGS presence in the yeah. city. Um, all of those things, you know, unless, you know, we, that's what will happen. And we'll also have to increase uh, taxes if we want to keep things with, you know, to, to bare bones. Mm -hmm. Then we have to also patch that with like a 10% tax hike. But, okay. you know, that, that's, that's really where we're at, and uh, you know, cities are the cores of our regions. They're yeah. they're really when when somebody comes to the region, it's what makes the region attractive is what that city looks like. Everybody knows what a suburb looks like. <laughs> you know, it, what's unique 
is that urban center. And, uh, and, and that's what, what puts the face on, yeah. on our region. It's not just Albany, it's also Schenectady, it's also right. Troy, and they also have their problems sure. for the same reasons. New York State really needs to step up and address the fact that our state and federal aid have been dramatically cut over the last 40 years. And, uh, and, and it's, it, you know, we, we, we have run out of Band-Aids. Uh, All right, well, thank you very much. Lee, you're doing time. good. In, uh, <laughs> thank you. We run out of time. You run out of money. So <laughs> <laughs> over here, but you're doing good work over thank here, you. and hopefully it should be with a blessing that everything thank should you. come out successful. Yes, thank continued you. success, Lee. Thank you.